Alright, I am driving down the road, as you can see, with autopilot, and I've noticed this on the new software version. We're on 2020.20.1. Since we're going to a supercharger, it's telling me it's preconditioning. It's telling me this on the screen. Sorry for the wobbly camera. It didn't used to tell, I know it used to do it, but it didn't used to tell anyone it was doing it. So, at least it's being honest and straightforward now and transparent because those are big issues and you have to be like that in 2020 right yeah okay Denise is laughing she's car camping in the back seat okay so be sure to like share subscribe hit the thumbs up and the bell for notifications and we'll see you in the next video this is 2020.20.1 software version gonna signal me here off the exit I've never seen it do that before this looks kind of new Oh, and while we are supercharging, I wanted to mention, if you stuck around to the end of this video, here's a bonus for you. What does that sound like? That sounds familiar, right? <laughs> but yeah, anyway, I wanted to explain why it's important to precondition a battery. It Tesla didn't always have battery preconditioning, but they do now. Sorry, I just woke up from car camping. Um, they, they, um, they haven't always had it. They have it now. I think they added it like maybe two years ago uh, because at first everything's been done in steps. They, they didn't have the supercharger network in 2012 when they launched the Model S. They didn't have anything for the Roadster in the past and the previous Roadster and you couldn't even supercharge that. You still can't unless you get some kind of conversion and even so you still can't use superchargers at Tesla. You can use other fast chargers potentially if you convert it. But Onto Model S and above, you can supercharge them. There was no supercharging network in 2012. I think it came out in 2014. Very, very limited supercharging network. It just barely functioned. And that was just the case all the way up to about 2000, uh, mid-2017, I'd say. Because the first half or so of 2017, which included my ownership, because I took delivery in March, there was limited chargers. And to my knowledge, there was no preconditioning going on in that era. It wasn't until the ramp up for the Model 3 launch, which started in uh, mid-2018, they started building more superchargers and launching these new superchargers. Like, they doubled the number of superchargers right around the same time they launched the Model 3. And actually, they didn't really start going online until early 2018, so everything was the same from my ownership for about a year. And then I think they added the preconditioning to the software that some, they didn't ever indicate they were doing that, but what is preconditioning? Why do you precondition? Okay, uh, let's say right today, today is 55 degrees according to my thermometer in the car, 55. And we were car camping, so the battery went down to 55 degrees. Its internal temperature is 55 degrees. Well, when you plug into these superchargers, these cables are thick and they create a lot of heat. Massive amounts of electrons creates a massive amount of heat when you're pumping them in at a high rate, which is, uh, this is a very high rate. It's like you're fast charging your cell phone. And Tesla wants their batteries to last as long as possible. Your cell phone doesn't have thermal management, unfortunately, but you only keep those for a couple of years, maybe. The most, I can't get more than two years out of a cell phone. I just, it's, the battery's completely dead and they're, they're, they're internal and they're locked inside. So with the Tesla superchargers, they have a thermal management system and they're pumping in electricity at the fastest, highest rate. So in order to do that, they wanna match up the temperature of the battery to the temperature of the electrons that are being pumped into that battery. 
If not, if there's a mismatch, Denise is covering her ears. If there's a mismatch, it's going to damage somehow the chemistry within the battery. It's going to shorten the life of that battery and Tesla doesn't want that and I don't want that. So the solution is on times when it's cold, you're gonna precondition by heating the battery. I don't know if they actually chill the battery down when it's super duper hot, I feel like you're at an overheat position, it might, because super cooling actually goes into effect on summer days when you're at the supercharger. You can hear those fans roaring in the front of your car on the hottest, most humid days because it's gotta cool that battery down while it's supercharging, especially during the supercharging process, for sure, at the peak rates. And uh, the peak rates are on a bell curve between about 20% of battery state of charge to about 60%. That's your peak rates. So I went right into that state. I think um, depending upon where you are, it may need to precondition more or less depending upon what your state of charge is gonna be when you arrive. If you're gonna arrive and it's gonna dump in massive kilowatt um, electricity, like the, the largest amount possible right away, between 20 and 60% state of charge when you arrive at the charger, it's going to have to precondition at the most, which is what happened to me today. But they don't tell you any of this information on the screen. It just tells you now that it's actually doing preconditioning. So it's been doing it for the last two years, I think, probably, from what I remember when they updated the software, because that was a big deal when they did, oh, they're preconditioning now. That means not only is it gonna protect your battery, but also another benefit is you're going to spend less time at the supercharger, okay? That's the other benefit because if they can dump in the highest rate right away and not limit its software because there's a mismatch in the temperatures there, then you're gonna spend less time at the charger. And also, Tesla will have, you know, people, this is your average consumer there, your average Tesla driver spending less time at the supercharger. That's a benefit to Tesla. They don't have to build as many chargers, right? It's kind of like your electricity company putting those meters on your, your outdoor units for your heat pump or air conditioner to turn those things off during their peak loads, right? It's, it's a similar type of a technique with using electricity that helps the company manage their demand loads. It's just another way that Tesla does it with their car. You may not have thought about the similarities there, but that is very, very similar. So I've just rambled on and rambled on with this video. Right, Denise? Yes. Yes, okay. Really but is there anything I haven't covered? Is there anything I forgot to cover here about preconditioning? Does this make sense to you? You're not a technical electrical engineer, are you? And neither am I. But does this make sense to the average Jane or Joe? Um, it makes sense. Did you read this, or is this just your own opinion? <laughs> um, I think both. It's my version of the facts, which uh, should be accurate. If, and if you're out there watching this and you think what I said is not accurate, please comment below so that you can set me record straight. But and if this intrigues you and you want to dive into it more and do some research on the internet, which anybody can do, you can't keep a lie out there more than about 60 seconds these days because somebody will find the, the truth on the internet. So find that and let us know in the comments. But if you never consider preconditioning, consider it now. Figure out what your car is doing. Uh, you know, if you can hear those fans roaring on your way to the supercharger and that little notification is on on your screen saying they're preconditioning, that's probably what it's doing. It's heating that battery up or cooling it, but most likely heating it. That's usually what it has to do. And then when it gets to the supercharger, and then when you're on a hot and humid day and it's actually pumping that electricity in, then it's gonna start cooling the battery. It's gonna, the goal is to keep it at an even temperature, what, like, like humans. We like it at like 73, 74, 75, right? All the time, right? If it gets out of that range, we don't like it anymore. Your battery pack is exactly the same way. Just think of it that way. And if, and you may not realize it as a human, but the more time you spend out of that range, most likely you're gonna shorten your lifespan too. <laughs> That's just the truth. I think, I, I think. And it also depends on what kind of shape you're in, how your own thermal management and your own body can manage you. But that's a whole other video. We're not gonna get into that here. We're only talking about Tesla batteries, right? Right, thank right. you. Okay, yeah, you're welcome. Mm -hmm. All right, bye. All right, Denise just brought up a point about dogs shortening their lifespans. Look, it's almost sunrise, like beautiful sunrise. What happens to outside dogs, you said? In cold climates, having a making your dog live outside, like in the yard on a chain with a box, shortens its lifespan. At least that's what my daughter told me when she was dog shopping. We had to pick an indoor dog. <laughs> and I, you were in a cold climate, Erie, Pennsylvania, yeah, right? That's a cold, country. cold climate. Yeah, I grew up in the country in northwestern Pennsylvania. We all had outside dogs.
so then I felt kind of bad. I didn't know that like leaving your dog outside will shorten its lifespan. So I just drew a parallel there between preheating your battery and making your dog live outside. <laughs> yeah, and I think, and humans too. I think all this stuff is related. It, it's all similar systems. It's kind of crazy to think about it. And if you believe Elon Musk, he says that everything that goes on your body is electrical impulses. Have you ever thought about that? Because he, yeah. that's what he thinks. He thinks that's why you can do this neural, neural link uh, yeah. company where, where he believes you can control electronics through your thoughts and your brain because yeah. all of that is electronic impulses. You can control other electronics with it potentially. Yeah, he said we're, uh, yeah. So, when we were in Ecuador, someone spoke about wearing special shoes that protect you from the magnetic movements of the earth. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right. That and I've, and we've, we've run the people on superchargers that have these special mats on their floor that have like, I don't know, lead in them or something oh, that, that... To protect you from the batteries that were Yeah, and, and the motor, when, when you put your foot into the accelerator, not the gas, the accelerator, oh. it generates additional, I don't know what is, wavelengths or arcing or something through the motors. And the motor, the front motor over here is, is real close to our feet, right? So if that yeah. affects us in a negative way, he wants to shield himself from that. Mm -hmm. He said, he told me, one guy at Supercharger, I remember this, he told me he could feel that effect happening when he mashed down the accelerator through his body. Some people are super sensitive. <laughs> <laughs> so if, yeah, so if Elon Musk believes all of this, maybe Elon Musk already knows this. Maybe he knows that's the next lawsuit waiting to happen. The next class action lawsuit against Tesla. Time will tell. And I, we spent a lot of time in this car. If you car camp too, does that affect you? You're, we're sleeping right on top of this massive battery pack. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, more to think about. Comment below with all this. Sorry, this has turned, on, this has turned into battery management 101 or system management or human battery animal system management 101. Management. Yeah, temperature, thermal management. That's what it is. Oh, what are you doing? Thermal is this how you're managing your? You're taking a caffeine. Is this gonna? Jet alert. Is your t internal temperature and circulation low? Do you need to give it a little boost? Yes, before five a.m. when I'm expected to go hiking, I need an, an additional boost of energy. Okay. All right, and we're about ready. We're almost charged up. We're ready to go on our hike.